six. Uh, it's helpful when you're making your films because everybody understands each other. Everybody, everybody kind of has their set role. Everybody knows where the other person is coming from. Their production. You don't really have to bring anybody up to speed. Like when Adam makes a movie, we all kind of know <laughs> what yeah. he's expecting and where he's coming from. When I make a movie, everybody kind of knows what I'm looking for, and so. Uh, I find working with a collective is advantageous because it speeds the process up and uh, I know it's just good working with people who understand where you're coming from. Well, the, like the surrounding elements to a film like the marketing and distribution has always been an important part of Astron 6 because yeah, we all grew up on VHS movies and there's kind of this lost art to them that we want to bring back of the like promotional material, like the covers, the posters, the trailers. There'd be trailers, you know, before movies on VHS tapes and sometimes after. And all those elements to us are like just as fun as the movies themselves. So we always are taking that into consideration when we're making our movies. We're always thinking like, how do we, if this was the 80s, how would we be marketing this? And like, who would be the audience for this? And inevitably that audience is ourselves, so. Yeah. This whole nightmare is my doing. I'm not leaving you here, come on. Get out of here. You are my last chance of redemption. Now it seems time has run out for us all. There's definitely a Roger Corman element to us in that we usually sit around and like come up with ideas and somebody will come up with like a random like high concept type thing and then we'll just work off of that and Jeremy will slap a poster together and everything kind of gets rolling at once and that's kind of how I work it myself personally and that's how I've always done it is like I usually think the trailer first almost when I make it and I'm like how would I actually sell this? in the first place. It's never like just like the story or just characters or whatever. It's always like the end result and how do I present that to people is like the most important part. Well usually we decide at the beginning whether we wanted it to be a trailer or a short film. Something like Laser Ghosts is kind of an exception because the whole point of it was to be like a narrative in a trailer style. Yeah. Uh, but then something like Fireman is like something that from the beginning was decided it would just be a fake trailer. And same with Father's Day, like it was originally just planned to be a three minute trailer basically and then expanded to a feature. It was something that we definitely weren't thinking ahead on. We just wanted to make this three minute grindhouse trailer and then it kind of exploded from there. It definitely is uh, a good way to uh, market your film before having any real like script or anything and basically just it's a good way to market the concept simply with having a trailer because then you can show here's like the money moments that people want to see is that good enough for a feature I guess so well pacing a feature and pacing a short we've discovered are like polar opposites like watching a feature like something like Father's Day or Manborg with like a short mentality like just isn't going to work because it, because of the expanded narrative you kind of have to allow certain things that you can't allow in a short film it's like it's difficult with the feature because you can't sustain like total insanity for like 90 minutes otherwise it becomes just as boring as if you know if the movie was like three hours and nothing happened because it just becomes such an onslaught of things that the audience gets disconnected so you kind of have to you have to like separate your moments and kind of work on building things up to punch lines I guess uh, well I think just having a passion for the material regardless is like a key component and if you're really passionate about stuff like that I find like 
very rarely are laughing at it. Like, I don't think any of us in Astron 6 think we're, like, better than the material that we're making. Like, that's just kind of who we are. So we want to make things as ridiculous as possible. And we're mining from this material that we, like, look up to as being the pinnacle of ridiculous. And so that's what we're hoping to achieve. And it's not, not something where we're, like, looking at it from this, you know, elevated moral high ground you know, pointing out how goofy it is. We are pointing out how goofy this stuff is, but to us that's just the genius behind it, because it's like accidental, you know, these happy accidents that make these really awesome movies. I didn't really have a set plan for Manborg on the balance of, like, computer effects and practical effects and stop motion and miniatures and all that stuff. It basically was just I wrote the script and I had no idea how I was going to do any of it. And kind of as I worked along, I decided like, okay, well this big monster has to be stop motion because there's not really any other way I can do it. And like these hover bikes are going to have to be, it wasn't even 3D, I call it 2.5D because I did it in After Effects and it doesn't actually count as 3D. And uh, yeah, and like I knew all the sets would have to be miniatures and stuff. So I don't know, like I said, there wasn't really like a plan. I just kind of instinctually knew how everything was going to play out on a very basic level, I guess. Yeah, I think it all kind of worked into what I hope is the charm of the movie, this kind of like hodgepodge of a million different things crammed together into one. Well, there was never my intention with Manboard to make it really convincing. I wanted it to be convincing in the kind of like video game-ish type aesthetic that I was going for, but never really beyond that. Cause I think that's my problem with special effects now, is that everybody's trying to make everything look really convincing, and that just makes it boring to me, I guess, because there's no, like, I don't see the artistry in trying to, like, pull the wool over people's eyes, whereas, you know, the stuff I make, I want it to be like, you know, there's a stop motion monster, there's a background that's made out of, like, cardboard and paint, and, like, I want people to be able to look at it and dissect it, because that's what I love to do. like. I can remember the first time I got a VHS player in the basement of my parents' house, I would go through movies frame by frame, like just pause and play on VHS, and I would look on movies like Mortal Kombat and like, you know, crummy 90s movies, and I'd look and see where, you know, where the matte lines were in the special effects and like where they would like composite and CG stuff and rotoscope people out and things. So that to me is half the fun of movies. Well, there's that. Uh, I don't want to call it like nerd culture, I don't know what the word for it would be, but like all, all that kind of media definitely plays into my, to my like love of, of film and being creative. It's not just movies, it's video games, it's action figures, it's comic books. And uh, so Manborg was supposed to be kind of like a combination of all those things because it's like, I tell everyone that it's like a video game or it's a movie that's based off a video game that's based off a line of action figures that's maybe based off a comic or something. Because I've always been fascinated by like cross-media kind of like representations of things. Because like my favorite movies when I was a kid were things like Mortal Kombat and you know stuff that was based off of something else that as a kid I was aware of and I knew the characters from already. So seeing it transition into film was like a really huge deal to me. Well, I was actually talking to Adam about this not too long ago, and uh, he was telling me how he likes the idea, I'm paraphrasing, but he likes the idea of people seeing things, like recognizable things from a certain film, like say Father's Day, like if he can get the image of the main villain, Chris Buckman, if he can get him like on posters and on toys and like in, on all kinds of media, like that kind of makes it seem more significant, I guess, as opposed to just being contained in a movie. Suddenly it's like, you know, you're seeing it all over the place, which gives it, I don't know, it's almost like a, I don't even know what the word for it would be, but it gives it like a quality that goes beyond just being contained in a film. It gives it like a life of its own almost, like it really becomes like a, like a character, like a pop culture type thing instead of just a movie. Personally, for me, if I can see like a DVD for Father's Day or Manborg or whatever we make that comes out of Japan that has like 
crazy text and then like a mishmash of like collage of pictures from the movies that makes no sense like as far as I'm concerned that's like the best thing that could possibly happen with the internet I guess they kind of have to have those added components because it seems like just going to see something in the theater isn't isn't going to cut it anymore you need those added media like I was saying to give your give your story some added life I guess I guess it's something that George Lucas started with Star Wars like it wasn't just the movie it was the toys it was the books it was the comics it was everything that surrounded it as well it kind of made it its own little world so if we can accomplish that with Astron 6 I think that'd be pretty sweet if there was a group of guys out there or girls who did yeah like another media that we are not experienced in like video games or something like that that we could partner with that would be pretty sweet I think to have to have another group of like-minded people in a different form of media who are you know talented and good at what they're good at what they're doing to make a video game or something like that I think that would be sweet uh well I think it's hard for me personally to step back from that because to step back from yeah, the process of making the film and all the elements that go into making it recognizable as a film because being a filmmaker, that's kind of the stuff that's like 90% of the charm for me. It's not all about the finished product, it's about getting there and everything you have to do to get to that, which I feel is just as important. And I think people should know that story too because usually it's, it seems like that ends up being more interesting than the actual movie itself, is that journey, so. Yeah, 